Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new series, this time a series. Let's try again. The Fourier transform. That's the series we're going with. Yep. All right. Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new video series on the Fourier transform. Now there's a lot of similarities and a lot of dissimilarities between the Fourier transform and the Fourier series. So let's read the definition. Now keep in mind, it's going to take a few videos to get a real good appreciation of what the Fourier transform actually is. Maybe after about five or ten videos or so, we'll have a fairly good understanding. We need to understand its behavior, how it's used, and why do we need the Fourier transform. Well, first of all, let's read the definition and see what it says. The Fourier transform is a mathematical method, just like the Fourier series, it's a mathematical method to convert a function in the amplitude versus time domain to the amplitude versus frequency domain. Well, that sounds an awful lot like the Fourier series because that's exactly what the Fourier series does. But there's one big difference. The Fourier series works on periodic functions, and so the question is, what do we do when we have a non-periodic function? And it turns out the Fourier transform does exactly what the Fourier series does, but it does so for non-periodic functions. Here again, for non-periodic functions. It does for non-periodic functions what the Fourier series does for periodic functions. Hmm. So, for example, we have a rectangular pulse strain, which is a periodic function. Notice that it's centered about the vertical axis. And then we take the Fourier series of that. Notice that this here is the period. This is the amplitude in the time domain right here. We do a Fourier series and we get the amplitude in the frequency domain. And notice that if it's centered about the central vertical axis, then we get something that looks like a sync function. Notice that omega sub naught, we're going to start using a sub naught here because we have discrete frequency values. Those discrete frequency values are where we find amplitudes for the Fourier series, which is the Fourier series translation of the time domain function. Notice for specific frequency values, we have specific amplitudes and we do not consider anything in between. We have what we call discrete values here. Now when we take the Fourier transform, notice we do that for a single pulse. So instead of having a whole infinite train basically of pulses, we just take a single pulse and now we want to do the same thing. We want to find the frequency versus time domain function of this. That's what we call the Fourier transform. Notice if we draw a dotted line about the amplitudes of these discrete values when we take the Fourier series, that same type of graph becomes the actual graph of the Fourier transform. Notice there's no discrete values here, there's just a continuous function that gives us amplitude versus frequency instead of the discrete values like that. What we do see is that there's places where it goes through the horizontal axis and we can find what those values are equal to. It turns out the values where the function, in this particular case, of course there's going to be a whole bunch of different kind of Fourier transforms for different kind of inputs, and we'll learn all about that later, and then we'll learn what happens when you widen the pulse, when you shorten, when you narrow the pulse and, and so forth, what, what happens when the pulse becomes infinitely long, things like that. And so we'll see how to do that later, but at this point realize that the place where it crosses the horizontal axis right here, it's 1 over tau times 2 pi, that would be the frequency at which it does that. Now 1 over tau, hmm, tau is the pulse width in this case, so notice that it goes tau over 2 to the right and tau over 2 to the left, so this becomes minus tau over 2, the total pulse width is tau. And notice that if we take 1 over tau times 2 pi, that will be the place right here where the function crosses. 2 over tau times 2 pi, where it crosses again, 3 over tau, and so forth. So you can see how that works. The amplitude of the central portion of the curve here is the amplitude of this function here. Let's say that the height here is a, whatever a is. And then we'll multiply that times tau. That gives you the height of the central function here when we take the Fourier transform. For example, let's say that tau is equal to 2 seconds. It was a 2 second pulse centered over the vertical axis right at. Then we go over here, 1 over 2 times 2, that would cancel out. That means that here the frequency where it goes through the horizontal axis would be equal to, or omega then would be equal to pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so forth. 
if tau is equal to 4 seconds, let's say it's wider, then we put 1 over 4, then this would be a half a pi, a full pi, 3 halves pi, and so forth. And if we narrow the pulse so that it, this would just be a half a tau, we plug in a half a tau here, then you can see that this would be 1 half times 2 pi. Uh, let's see here. Well, if tau was only one second, there you go. So it was two seconds before, we now make it one second long. So one over one times two pi, that means the function would go through two pi, four pi, six pi, and so forth to the horizontal axis. So you get kind of a feel of how that works. I haven't shown you yet mathematically how to do this Fourier transform that will come in the next video. In the video after that, we'll show you some examples, but at least now you have a feel of what the Fourier transform actually is. It always helps to know what you're dealing with than to start doing mathematical equations and trying to solve these things when you're not really sure what it is in the world that we're doing. Now you know that when you take the Fourier transform, you're basically doing the same thing as taking the Fourier series, but in, instead of taking it for a periodic function, you're doing it for, for example, a single pulse. And that's how it's done.